So we're all here for it. All right. Um, well, I think it's always hard to present after lunch because um, sometimes we haven't moved around in the morning and when food sets and so nap time kind of creeps up on us. Um, I'll try to keep you awake, awake with some stimulating certification information. Um, I'm going to kind of divide this into two parts today. Uh, I'm John Bjerke. I manage the Cisco Networking Academy program in the western U.S. I also manage all of the career colleges across the U.S. Uh, also for the program. Um, today, we, I want to kind of start with a framework around certification, probably information most of you uh, already know about. But the second half, I want to share some working examples here in California that will be uh, beneficial to this audience. And so I've invited my partner, Richard Rodiga, uh, who's a faculty member at Ohlone College, to kind of talk about um, certification that has legs in both K-12 uh, and the uh, community college environment and really is part of a larger pathways uh, initiative that he's been uh, managing for the last five, six years in Northern California. So um, with that, I'll get started. Yeah, I don't have one. Um, I'll let you click on it. Okay. Cool. Sure. So here's kind of what I want to talk about today, the, the framework of certification, what it is, what is a quality certification program, and kind of take a look at the education point of view and then share kind of my Cisco or, or industry point of view. Uh, the second half as we kind of get into it, I want to look at how it's being implemented here uh, in California so that it um, resonates with you as an audience. I know, can I have a hand of, see the hands of folks that are working here in California? Any from outside the state? Where are you guys, where are you guys from? Okay, welcome. Um, how many people here teach Cisco Networking Academy classes or are contacts in the academy? Okay, good. Fair number of you. Um, so, some of the points that we'll also talk about as far as uh, what comprises a good certification program is. The way that certification validates skills and, you know, how are, how are those skills delivered and who develops them and, and um, is there alignment with certification. So uh, with that, let's go ahead and get started. So what is certification? Um, it's really a process through which an organization validates skills. And so uh, it verifies that someone meets competence standards and they're usually an assessment associated with it. Uh, a, a certification program continues to grant recognition. Um, so if you think about any of the certifications that are out there today, whether it's um, what Alan does at CompTIA, for example, whether it's Cisco, or any of the other providers, uh, you usually have to re-up. You have to keep your skills current and you have to pass the exam every for Cisco three years. Um, for other certification providers, it depends on what their program is. But, um, the whole basis is to validate a student's skills, to keep them current, to make sure the skills are current. So one thing that's worth pointing out, I know this is probably common knowledge for all of you in the room that are instructors, industry certification is different than a certificate program. I think we all agree on that. Um, so an industry certification like we talked about is dynamic. Students have to keep their skills up. In the case of a Cisco certification, they have to re-up or take the exam every three years, and they have to address those gaps between the previous exam and, and the new exam. A certificate program is static. A certificate program could be a couple of courses at a college. So as an example, I went onto Ohlone's website this morning before I came into San Francisco just and kind of did a keyword search around certificate programs. So for a couple of Cisco courses they have for my CCNA classes, um, you know, their certificate program wants the student to complete, complete the courses satisfactorily. Um, they want at least 50% of the, complete at least 50% of the required units at Ohlone College and a minimum 2.0 uh, grade average. So my two courses in there might lead the certification, but since there's only a couple of them within the certificate program and there's no requirement to re-up that certificate, it kind of stands alone. Um, Richard, would you add anything else to that as far as uh, no, I would just say that you know, uh, having a certificate program is important for us uh, to show that you know, we're accomplishing our students are uh, retaining and, and completing programs. So the state of California is very interested in us doing that. Um, but you know, we encourage our students to do more than 
could just get an Ohlone certificate. Uh, once they leave the Fremont area, people don't even know where Ohlone is. It's an Ohlone college. Uh, so, you know, us, uh, an industry certification is really quite a bit more important. Yeah. Sorry. I think the other attributes too worth noting is that because it's static, once somebody gets a, what is a certificate, an associate degree, whatever, it can't be revoked. The person who owns that at the point in time at which they receive it. Um, if you don't re-up your certification, it does go away. So quality. Um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this slide, but um, a lot of, within technology, for example, those industry uh, organizations that are offering certification really go out of their way uh, as they're developing and managing that uh, program within their business to make sure that they meet uh, standards. And so this just illustrates a couple of the standard organizations that are responsible for that. Go ahead. So when you develop a, a certification program, is it valid, reliable, and defensible? Is there a content outline of what will be tested? So in the case of Cisco, um, do we have courseware that is continuously updated that meets the certification or exam question? Um, will the study conducted to identify if the, the content is, is current and is there a content outline? Um, within the world of networking, the skills are constantly changing as technology advances and so we have to stay on top of it. We actually have a business unit devoted to learning and certification. The training or the learning is treated separately from the certification. Um, yes, we have subject matter experts. We also use consultants uh, just from a system perspective. Are there published data on the test results? There are, but even we at Cisco have a hard time sometimes um, sharing it even internally with the right audience because it's a relationship between Cisco certification uh, and in our case Pearson Mew who is the exam delivery provider. And so we've been fighting the battle for six or eight years when we get questions about certification pass rates, it's, it's even difficult for me as an area manager to sometimes pull that information out, but, but that adds quality to the program. And again, just kind of reemphasizing from the previous page, are there research requirements? Uh, in our case, yes. You have to re-up every three years. You're going to have to acquire whatever these skills have developed uh, with the new exam versus the old exam. And if you're working in the industry, chances are you're going to pick that up or go through some kind of a uh, professional development um, during your career to keep you up to speed. Next slide. So impartial. Uh, is there a, a certification commission or board independent from the organization's board of directors? In technology, quite um, frequently, uh, there are partners involved. There's like, enterprise accounts involved. So yes, there is feedback from the outside. What's the composition of that board? Again, it's usually people working in the industry, uh, education, uh, and others. Do the requirements and objective are the exam questions fair? Are they related to the current skills that are required to be working in the industry? Uh, yes, generally with a large organization, they're going to be having certification either embedded within the organization and that's going to be uh, addressed organically. Um, training and certification are the two distinct functions. At Cisco they are, um, at CompTIA they are, at most organizations they are. Uh, Cisco actually has, outside of its academic partners like the community colleges and other instructors at this conference, we also have a commercial uh, learning division that provides kind of boot camp style training for uh, corporations and, and other enterprise accounts. Are there clear rules as to who can and cannot proctor or administer an exam? Um, generally, again, the larger organizations that have a certification program are going to be partnered with an exam delivery provider. In the case of Cisco, it's with Pearson View. Uh, you can also be partnered with Prometric or some other exam providers as well. When you do that, the testing situation or scenario has a proctor uh, that administers the exams for both Prometric and for Pearson View. Okay. Fair, I'm almost off these slides, I promise. <laughs> are there documented policies and procedures? Is there a way to file a complaint or appeal by those that feel they've been treated unfairly? This gets more into the exam delivery provider realm, so here's the view of a student has taken an exam, is there a recourse or if there, is there a way for a student to air um, concerns? Yes, there is, uh, through the proctor and, and they have their own um, system for addressing that. Is there a documented process for how those complaints and appeals are considered? Again, yes, Cisco 
with students directly more in the coursework courseware area addresses that, but again, within um, certification that is handled by the exam delivery provider. Okay. So, value of certification for education institutions. Again, this is about validating student skills. Um, if they pass their certification and put in that kind of work and, and study to, to pass it, they're going to stand apart from their peers, um, especially when it comes to qualifying for an internship, um, getting that first job, uh, whatever it might be. The other value for um, a strong uh, certification, this dynamic and, and is continually updated, is that it also provides a foundation for continuously updating that curriculum that supports it. Again, credibility with employers. If, if four uh, prospects walk in and for an interview and one of them has certification and a little hands-on experience, and the other three are fresh out of community college. Uh, it's probably more likely that the personal certification is going to win out. It really does validate skills. Um, communicate quality programs and add value to the programs. In your world and, and in career technical education, certification is really no more than one of the various outcomes. And so, with Cisco, for example, um, we're giving students skills to get an entry-level job. We're preparing them to pass the CCNA exam, which is certification, or we're also providing them in a lot of cases, especially through the community college um, system, the chance to continue with their post-secondary education. So certification is just part of that larger system of outcomes. And again, the last one kind of ties back to the first about validating those skills, giving them one leg up over some other um, job candidates that might be looking for the same uh, job. So, this slide has shown up in previous Cisco presentations. You're probably wondering why a guy from Cisco is standing here talking to you about education. Um, we're dedicated to transforming education globally. Um, has anybody been out to see our site, getideas.org? It's been created by the, the corporate affairs team for uh, administrators and instructors globally. It's kind of a thought leadership site, and, and ideas from around the world are kind of vetted and fleshed out there, uh, along with other investments that Cisco makes in education. And really, the, the core is we believe that the network, the internet, can be used to kind of um, as a great equalizer, provide global access to education. Um, as an organization, we have a stake in the future workforce, um, especially getting more students into STEM, getting more females into technology, and a stake in education as a curriculum provider with the System Network Academy. So that's kind of our education roots. So our perspective on certification, some of this will be repetitive. I think the first point is very relevant as a global standard. Um, our certifications are global. Our courses are offered in eight languages. Our courses are found in 160 countries around the world. We have a million unique students in a year. And so that's where certification can really uh, stand out and set a quality standard. Um, proving that a particular skill or knowledge has been acquired. Um, Industries with certifications expect employees to have them. Um, I hope this one is up not certified, but employees, students, and graduates are more marketable. We'll talk about that. Your earning potential goes up. Go ahead and next slide. This slide is repetitive, so if you've seen some of the Cisco overview presentations in the past, it kind of starts down here at the bottom. A worker with a high school degree in today's economy, um, median salary of 27000 Average worker in the United States without a college degree, 38,000. You put a college degree on top of it and keep climbing. Networking after you have a college degree, maybe you have your cert, maybe you have a certificate, but maybe not well, if you don't have your certification, but maybe you have everything else, 70,000. But then you leave the cert on top of the college education and the hands on experience, um, it, it adds value. Um, this side kind of goes from left to right and repeats some of the things I've already said, but um, we leverage our expertise in ICT and networking to develop courses um, that are delivered through global partnerships. I mentioned 160 countries around the world. It's, I want to say, 10,000 institutions. Um, our social academies and those partnerships I'm referring to that and, and other community-based organizations. Um, again, you can see how we scale globally. We provide not only technical skills or 
you know, entry level job skills, but we also provide um, business experience uh, through entrepreneurship and also through uh, health information networking that is fairly new. Um, some of those are content modules and, and white papers. The health information networking is actually a new course available in the United States for uh, students currently enrolled in the CCNA. And 21st century skills is important. Things like critical thinking, um, the ability for young students to be able to go out and, and conduct an interview or to write a resume, um, real life skills. So again, the outcomes I kind of talked about before, certification being one of them, but entry level careers, CERT, uh, entrepreneurship is, is some of the business skills I was talking about that um, are part of uh, some of those overlay uh, white papers we have in the past 421 curriculum. Or further education, continuing with your post secondary education. What is it? Sure. Do you know how many CCNAs are you uh, getting certifications every year? How many master certifications every year? How many I don't know that answer. You probably can find out. Um, Nobody knows. No, but I guess I have to question internally a lot when I see. I don't. Um, <laughs> you're just asking who passes, period, not what the attempts are. Nice. Who passes? Um, I'll ask the question again. I'll have, have, if you want to leave a card with me, and I can email you. I'll start the next question. So 35 at our school. This is last. <laughs> <laughs> so so we'll find out right now. Academy. The reason why this is important, you heard know, earlier, that um, uh, that unless we can uh, demonstrate gainful employment, and they can do it, not to get uh, perfect employment. And a lot of the equipment, I look over half a million dollars worth of fiscal year. I got to spend fifty thousand dollars a year to keep it running. Okay. Um, and we do equipment and training. Uh, a lot of that comes from fund that's hurting something. If I can't demonstrate some success, okay, as a result of the programs they're providing, I can't. I won't be able to be funded. So this affects the, the whole academy operation. Do you have that kind of feedback from your own students and the alumni? The few that, you know, it's less than 20% response, you know, so that's the response. So, so that's not sufficient to develop a solid data of success. And of course, uh, Which school are you from? The community college where I'm from. Yeah, we're in the record. Okay. We've been doing it for 14 years. Okay. But, and, you know, we're very serious aspects of it. You see some of the food, including now the health care. Uh, network models, okay? But the point is that for this, this model to succeed at the community college level, there's got to be a, a way of funding it. Okay? It's a high cost program. Okay? And I think system has to re examine, you know, the data, first of all, the data that's available and the cost, the cost to the institution. No, I couldn't agree more. Okay. So, what about instructors? How, what's the duration of the education? That's the validation. So if I hear your question right, right now instructors in the System Networking Academy program aren't required to be certified. We highly recommend it. Moving forward though, Richard can tell you some more stories about the way that the uh, program is morphing. Uh, as those of you that are involved in the program know, we're going through a, a transition called Academy Evolution. We're changing the types of partnerships that we have, we're flapping it three tiers to two tiers. Without a lot of detail, however, the new instructor trainer qualifications are very stringent and instructors will have to be certified within one year uh, for each curriculum that they're teaching. So. And that's just the instructor trainers? Yes. No. Right, that's not an instructor that teaches the students. Um, but that is a shift for making the program the quality of it. Address. Right now, it's not a requirement. Uh, we would prefer it, but we can hopefully enforce that. Okay. Uh, um, anything else before I go on? The fun part's coming up. Richard's a good speaker. He has to do some cool things in the uh, South Bay. <laughs> For those of you that don't already know, but maybe have a little background knowledge about the program, um, within the Networking Academy, every single one of our courses is a program of study, and it is aligned with an industry certification. So in the case of IT Essentials, it's a single course, but it does map the CompTIA's A-plus exam. Um, CompTIA 
and Cisco product management have a very close relationship. Every time that certification changes, our uh, curriculum uh, moves ahead of everything. CCNA, uh, same thing. In the discovery track for CCNA, we have two courses that provide an entry level network certification, and the exploration track it also prepares you for the full CCNA certification. Uh, two different learning methodologies accomplishing the same thing, prepping the student to pass the CCNA certification exam. Um, we also have a CCNA security, which is the map to the CCNA security uh, credential that came out a couple of years ago. We don't currently have curriculum that maps voice or wireless, but there's some great things that have been developed out in the community, and um, as we change through academy evolution, there's some great things happening around voice and wireless right now. And CCNP, uh, there are three different CCNP courses. Um, each course has its own exam. It gets the CCNA, CCNP credential, however, you do need to pass all three courses. And the CCNP. And the CCNP. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. I'd like to introduce Richard uh, Grotega. Let's go ahead to the next slide. And um, just to kind of give you some background, this a lot of what the slides are that I filtered from Richard uh, yesterday are about his work in pathways. But the thing that's really cool is at the very center of this pathways map is certification and preparation for high school students for CCD and C. And you want know, to just kind of hand that off? Sure. Thanks, uh, John. Yeah. So, uh, uh, computer people love flowcharts, so this is something I use quite a bit. <laughs> but uh, some of our administrators don't like it too much. But uh, you know, uh, in order for California high schools to qualify for some of those Perkins funds and California Partnership Academy grants, they have to have a program of study that leads to some kind of certification. So it was an easy uh, thing to do to use Cisco Academy uh, with the A plus classes and, and the CSEN courses to provide that kind of curriculum uh, and in a standardized way, a way that mapped well with what we were doing at the community college. So map articulation uh, could work quite simply, uh, quite easily. Uh, but uh, John wanted me to talk about uh, the next slide, please. Uh, this little summer uh, institute that we uh, began, uh, we've done it for three summers in a row. And uh, it was a a way to bridge the high school students to our campus. So we actually conducted the, the certification prep course at our campus in our lab in the summer when uh, you know our equipment was available, teachers were available as well. So we've done it as a four week each time. Um, let's go to the next slide, please. Students uh, need to have taken uh, the courses at their high schools, either in the 10th, 11th, or 12th grade. Uh, the IT Essentials uh, or the CCNA Discovery courses, the first one and second one. Discovery 1 and Discovery 2, for those of you that are familiar with uh, the Cisco curriculum. Uh, we uh, decided to run our uh, summer boot camp uh, for CCNA Discovery. <coughs> Let's go ahead and do the next slide. So, um, in our first uh, year, we had 14 students uh, participate. I forgot to get their uh, photo release, uh, so I had to. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, this is a pilot group. Uh, they didn't all come in with the necessary prerequisites for supposed to have completed the Discovery 1 and 2. Some of them only had done Discovery 1, so we we really needed to have, uh, had to do quite a bit of work to get them up to speed to be able to, to pass the cert. Uh, next slide. So the content is exactly that. Uh, focus on uh, the CSENT exam, use the ICND-1 official certification guides that the kids had to buy the book for $30. Uh, that was this prep book that we, we had. Uh, and to entice that first group, we offered them a free refurbished laptop computer, a little Dell that allowed them to connect this COM port so they could connect to their equipment. A lot of that they hadn't really seen at their high school. They didn't have enough equipment. They had a packet tracer and things like that, but they didn't really have a lot of gear. And in our lab in the summer, we could use our college lab for them to come in and take classes. Uh, next slide. Uh, we ran the institute for a whole month, month, four weeks in July. Those students gave up their summers. Uh, they came every day from Monday through Thursday in our lab all day long, working on labs and topics pertinent to the exam itself. So different than the curriculum, the curriculum follows a certain uh, we focused on the uh, certification exam prep with the seven topics. Uh, next slide. 
there was the daily uh, topics, uh, so morning lecture and then uh, lots of uh, hands-on experience and a whole week at the end on just cram days, test prep software, going over the exam, uh, testing it. Next slide. And lots of practice. I guess this is a build slide. You forget to push on the switch for There you go. Oh, so lots of practice. We have four different high schools participating uh, in that particular uh, summer session. Uh, this is the second year graduates. I did get their photo release. Uh, we had students from uh, your local schools in Fremont. Uh, nine out of these 15 students passed the CSEN on the first try, <coughs> which was not a small endeavor. They have to have a, at least an 80% passing score. It's a test of which uh, the wife they've never done before in high school. This is the first time. Certification exams are really different. They have 90 minutes, it's on the computer. Everything's fair game. Some of the questions are totally unfair, and they complained about them. But who do you complain to? Right. Richard, stop, stop there for a yeah. So on some of the stuff I talked about in the framework of certification and quality, did you what sort of um, why did your students have to communicate back to Pearson or Cisco if they felt there was something unfair during that 90 minute exam period? Was there well, there is a mechanism. Uh, you know, we're also a Pearson View Testing Center, so that helped. So they actually took the test right on our school site much more comfortable uh, for them uh, to do that as well. So there, there was uh, that mechanism. Uh, Shannon Victoria Harris, she's the young woman in the back right, uh, the blonde haired gal from Castro Valley High School right here in the East Bay, almost got a perfect score. I mean, Shannon just, she did better than I did. I didn't tell her that. <laughs> she was awesome. Um, next slide. So uh, in our most recent iteration, we actually got uh, approval. You know, the previous two summers we sort of did this for free. My other co-faculty members and I, it was fun. We enjoyed it. The high school kids in small doses are wonderful. Uh, but your <laughs> high school teachers, uh, you know, having them for a few weeks is great. Uh, especially those that really want to be there, and uh, uh, it was wonderful. Uh, and you learn a lot from them. Uh, as well, but we got enough interest to actually create a course at Avoni uh, in our system that they could register for and get credit for, and uh, the state could pay us a portion for it, and we could pay the instructors. So, uh, this last group, uh, next slide, uh, this is the group that took our class this summer, uh, 2011. Uh, we had 15 high school students. Uh, we had a total of 19 students because we had to have a capacity of 20, so we needed to make sure we had a few college students in there as well that registered for the class. The high school students, um, of them, 12 out of the 15 passed, where she said. So, can I interrupt you here one more time? Getting back to the question from Rhode Island. Do these kind of pass rates or the metrics that you can collect locally from your program? Um, what does that do for you from a parking perspective or a funding perspective? Is, is that well, it's happen? great. I mean, this is the way we get the numbers. If they're taking the test with us. We know what the numbers are. We don't have to go back and ask someone else. We can not disclose. It was only $450 to become a person to person view to buy their gear. You have to buy a camera. You have to buy a signature pad. Uh, it's really well worth doing. Would you just appreciate it? Yeah, we charged, I'll get to that, I have a slide for that, there's tuition. It was a regular college course, so here in California at the time it was just $28 a unit, so $56. Now it's more. Now we have a problem. <laughs> um, if I could go back to that slide, I just wanted to acknowledge Cody Brown. Uh, he's actually was a junior. He's covered up, he's right underneath the clock. You can only see a half of his face there. He got a 98.5, so he beat Shannon's score. He was really proud of that. That was on his first try. That's almost perfect. Just, yeah, go ahead. Yeah. All right. How do we make this sustainable so we can do it each summer? We have a plan for this summer again. Um, well, um, next slide. Um, we chose the uh, uh, Discovery curriculum because uh, if they complete Discovery 1 and 2 at their high school satisfactorily and they score a decent score on their final exam, they're they're eligible for a discounted voucher for the CSEN exam, 50% off. So the test was $62. We paid for that, for them. So they paid nothing to take the test uh, one time, right, the first time. 
we could do A plus if you wanted, but A plus is much more expensive. There's two exams. They're each $170 a piece. If you become a CompTIA authorized partner, which you should, I would highly recommend you do that too, you can get the discounts uh, of uh, half, almost 60% off. But still, the two A plus tests are $80. He says $160 uh, is still kind of expensive. Uh, so we didn't do A plus, but you could certainly do a boot camp with A plus. Next slide. We became a test center. Uh, I highly recommend that too. Uh, it allows us to uh, provide a testing facility right on campus so that on the very last day they they took their test on our campus. In the same rooms they were sitting in doing their lectures and other topics included. Does CompTIA leverage Pearson View or do they use Prometric? The name was CompTIA uses Pearson View also, yeah. I have a funny question. Okay. What equipment do you use for A plus? What uh, computers you open up? Or oh yeah, we're well. We uh, we accept refurbished equipment. We also have this sort of recycling on that we get a lot of called strut students recycling use technology. We get quite a bit of old equipment. And you do all those things in one round, or get to do We have an open lab, all one area that's open. It's a huge open lab. Yeah, mm -hmm. right. What's the area of the open lab? Well, much bigger than this. Or these? Or these? Well, you have the open office of computer science for multimedia, there's machines there that come in. And we're open from 8 in the morning until 10 at night. So we have our advanced student service tutors. So yeah, it works pretty well. So become a test center. Okay, the cost. So the course was offered through our regular summer sketch session, $26 per unit for high school graduates. If they're currently in high school, we had quite a few juniors. They were still in high school. They pay nothing here in California. That's still in effect. I don't know how long that's going to last. but So they pay nothing. The students pay for the textbook. The exam fees, $62 per student. We paid it through our regional Cisco Academy program funds. So students pay nothing. Uh, we had pizza parties. It was quite a community. The kids were there. They were happy to be there. Who paid for pizza? We did. Well, it cost us twelve hundred dollars to fifteen hundred dollars for the whole program. That's what well, we it was worth it. I mean, uh, five of those kids matriculated to a loan. They may never have done that. So. Great. Okay, thank you, Richard. I really appreciate that. I hope, was that not able to see a working example from here in Northern California since a lot of you were from here? Did that help Rhode Island with some of the? Giving you some ideas, but you know, it's just the task I see to get into the data that you've got in the testing center. But it seems to me that it's just good interest to make that data available now without using the testing center. Well, Joni's doing that five, so she's frustrated too, probably because we'll. Good. Um, let me just finish this. Is, uh, I'll let you guys down early. It's been a good class. Uh, we also, at the four-year college level, have a wonderful um, relationship with CSU Monterey Bay. I didn't see either of the contacts here today, but they have a wonderful four-year, uh, it's not DSIT, but it's a networking. Uh, yes, it's CSIT. 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 Computer Science and Information Technology. Um, so anyway, Cisco, through the three uh, Monterey Bay Area Community Colleges has academies that all articulate uh, into the, the lower division uh, part of their program, right? And so that they can actually take credits with them going to CSU and B. Um, and because of this tight ecosystem that they've been developing, through an MSF grant, they created an internship program called Embrace. Um, so they've got the pathways from High school in Salinas, Monterey, uh, Santa Cruz, Pacific Grove, and some of the other areas that all feed into the three community colleges. And the three community colleges can transfer uh, up into the, the CSU Monterey Bay program. Anyway, the, one of the faculty members that's in the networking department at CSU Monterey Bay um, through an NSF grant put together an internship program and went out and found partners of which this was one of them um, to put select students to work. And so the students came from the community colleges to feed into the CSU and be 
program, but the funding was through um, an NSF grant for three years to administer it, and, and they received quite a bit of money, but they probably care about half a million dollars or something like that over a three-year period. So but anyway, we had uh, six or eight partners involved. Cisco was one of them. I think that there were two uh, student interns for each organization that was willing to uh, put up the minimum hourly rate and, and so forth. The, the Naval Postgraduate School down there hired a couple of their IT departments. So um, really well done. But the reason I, I bring it up is because besides the work experience that these guys uh, have the opportunity to participate in, you know, what are they going to do to distinguish themselves to, first of all, get accepted into the internship program? Do they have industry certification? They may or may not, but it's certainly something to think about. And then once those students are in those organizations, if they want to continue to, to work and differentiate themselves, again, certification becomes very important to sort of validate your skills and kind of standing out. And so um, I just want to close. That, that's kind of a far-fetched example for my certification presentation, but I, I think it's uh, realistic. So. Um, next slide. Just summarizing all the points we're trying to hit today and takeaways, um, especially for the, your information questions from Rhode Island and New York, is that what you Massachusetts? It is really, you're right, certification needs to be an outcome, part of a program of study to help get those perfect donors to not only fund and start your training, but to provide a in the classroom and do all the things that you can do with perfect donors at, at the K-12 level and at the community college level. Improve the quality and quantity of job opportunities for the students that are competing in this tough economy and get a job. Guarantee the skills and knowledge of the workers. Certification is dynamic. They have to re up, at least with us, every three years. They have to stay current. Um, better prepare students for college and the workforce. And require instructors to be actively involved and, and qualified for student success. Excellent. Um, there's a blog. <laughs> well, yeah. Here's my contact information if you need it. I want to thank you for your time today. We're done about uh, 10 minutes early, so I'll give that back to you. And um, I guess I'll take any questions at this point, or you're free to. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and today we're pushing towards giving them a good to their IT or video their IT training, or just staying at the same level. So I think your question is, do we have curriculum for voice around the new advanced teaching and voice certification? We have our community working on that right now. There's instructors from six different community colleges across Canada and the U.S. that have formed a tire team, and, and that's actually being worked on. The Cisco Academy, Cisco as an organization, has not invested dollars into formal curriculum for that. They have a There's a voice certification, and then there's a wireless certification, uh, both of which we and, and, and security support. Yeah. Based on the, what you know about the UN how does that change anything that you design for them? Uh, it doesn't because what's changing in terms of academy evolution is what you're referring to. Uh, that's just processes and platforms that are changing. So we flatten the partner model, we have new partner types that I'm sure you're familiar with already. Um, and then obviously Polar Express is the code name for the the CDE for the old Academy Connection platform it has a new user interface and has become more robust over time. The certification stands apart from that. So as new certs um, and skills, test questions within the certs are developed by Cisco uh, Learning and, and Development Organization, the Network Academy will keep its courses, um, student courses current uh, with those certification changes as we always have in the past. So the Academy Evolution won't do anything to certification. Anything else? Yeah, one thing uh, I was real concerned about when Cisco went from the uh, CCNA to the Discovery and Exploration, and I teach community college. I think my students are coming out of the workforce looking for a secondary job or a secondary education uh, to improve their skills in getting in the system, and they get into the exploration. And we start them off in exploration because uh, they hadn't had Discovery in high school. So they've been out so long. They sit down there in the first semester and they're wondering what's the subject of this? What's an IP address? The very basics that they when they teach and discover, they didn't know. And Cisco didn't address this 
And what I had to do was take the discovery course and pick out the essentials of the discovery and put into the, uh, uh, a course of introduction and networking and made that a prerequisite to Cisco. I think that was a big mistake that Cisco made because it gave us a really, really hard time transitioning from CCNA to exploration. From the start of that question? Yeah. Um, what school are you from? Pardon? What school are you from? I'm in Lee College in Baytown, Texas. Um, you know, as an instructor, do you have a reaction to that? Or? Yeah, well, we found the same thing to be true. And we actually <coughs> teach the discovery curriculum at our college and the exploration. So we have discovery one, two, and our sort of introduction to it. Yeah, that thing again takes a long time in each uh, four semesters of discovery and turn around and take four semesters of Right, so we, we do the exploration in half a semester. Yeah. Of course, it's the eight weeks. That's so it's tough. I do two that. Yeah. I teach uh, exploration one and two, uh, eight weeks uh, a piece, and three and four and eight weeks a piece. So right. it's only two semesters. Exactly. Which is, yeah, they're, you know, it's tough. Uh, uh, they really need to, it's networking, and they need to come in with the right skills. And uh, we're hoping that they'll learn more of these things about high school and we can start them earlier there. And, uh, yeah. You know, we found the same problem when we migrated from the people to the exploration. We just started, we, we basically started teaching something that is the whole principle from the first course 